Hello, good evening. It's Mr. Eric Parker. Yes, sir. What's happening, brother? How are you? All is well, my my friend. All is well, man. I just wanted to say last night it was it was good to see you. Um, I I, I remember you know seeing you around campus uh, vaguely. No I, word. I was no I was word. I was always on my way out of the class or work, man. So. Yeah, man. I hear you. I feel you. But but I just want to say you know a lot of you've been you've been receiving a lot of. Uh, well-deserved accolades and congratulations, man. But I just want to reiterate that I want to say thank you for making the project. Uh, one, being an avid fan of hip hop for as long as I I can remember, and thank you for even giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Oh no, nah, man, much appreciated. It's all great. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, man. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that, man. I, I absolutely, man. I like you know, seeing it on TV doesn't give it. It's. Well, he- yeah, it's funny because it was meant to be seen in the theater the way we anticipated it. But other than that, even that theater wasn't like the biggest experience that you could see because you know it's not really a movie theater that big. Yeah. yeah. And then and then it's also a different experience depending on which crowds you watch it with. Like if you watch that crowd with more like-minded, uh, uh, with people who are more like-minded who, uh, with, with you then you would have a different experience than if you watch it. Like, you know, different places have different experiences. I've watched it with so many different crowds. You can feel different energies, you know? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. hip-hop fans feel one way about it. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot... Who, who... Hello? Yeah, I was saying non-hip-hop fans feel a different way, you know? They have a different experience, you know? And, and, and like, you could tell from a lot of the questions that were being asked, um that it wasn't really a hip hop crowd. I think they just came out because they were part of the production, you know. The... Yeah, some of that. I like that too. I'm just saying you have like a, when you go to the theater to watch anything, it's a collective experience as opposed to like when you're home watching something on your TV. Yeah. Like every like everybody laughs at the same moment and you feel like it's an experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. if you go to a comedy club and everybody's there, you know, it's different than if you watch it on TV and you don't hear the laugh track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely. different, you know? It's different. And and I and I'm but, pretty yeah. seeing like you said, you've seen you've seen it from all all points of, of view from all over the world. Yeah, many different audiences, even from, we, we screened it at the Metropolitan, I mean, excuse me, um, um, the, um, yeah, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, we screened it there, and then the night before, we screened it at Queensbridge Housing Projects, like at their Reef Center. Wow. So that is totally different experiences, you know? Man. Like Queensbridge, you can imagine there were kids in there who saw themselves in the film or saw some kids that they know, like in the background somewhere. And they knew, like, ill will. They knew the family. They knew the plot. It's like somebody making a movie about your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They felt it differently, you know? Wow. And making a film about your life and then bringing it to you, back to right. where you lived your life. Right, right. And you're saying it like, oh, snap. You don't see yourself like that. Most people don't see their lives or their, what, what, but, you know, the things that, they, that represent them like that, you know, like their block, their neighborhood, you know? No, no. So that was a different experience. Anyway, we better get going, man. Unless we already started. <laughs> no, no, I got no. Now, speaking of blocks and neighborhoods, like what, like what's, like originally, where are you from? I'm from I'm from South Jersey. I'm from Mount Holly, New Jersey, which is section from? five, oh, on the on the turnpike. Um, so so Queensbridge was totally different than my experience, but it was also the same as my experience. You know. The um. And, and a lot of people may think that this was. Wait, wait, let me ask you this question: Are you writing or are you recording? I don't actually, know how I should answer. No, I'm actually, you know, I'm actually recording because I've done. Okay, this. cool, cool. I've been okay. doing this, man. The, the first time I ever did this, I tried to, I tried to right write, at the same time. and I yeah. said, "This is madness." Yeah, I've done both. I've done both. Like if I was on a crazy deadline, you don't have time. Like if I was writing breaking news. If you don't have time, you gotta just take it on the phone as it comes. But yeah. it's better to record it because then you can, if you're doing an interview, if you're recording it, you can concentrate on the questions. You know what I'm saying? I'm Absolutely. Like, but anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Nah, nah. Listen, man. Listen. This is all about you, man. So you can talk as much as you possibly can. I don't know how much time you have because I, I'm picking up my daughter in the next 15, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. But I can, you know, she can hang out for a minute. Oh, okay. Home. Okay. <laughs> now. A lot of people may think that with this project, this is your introduction to hip hop. 
So for those of us who don't know, like I know quite oh. a bit about your career, but for those of us My who don't know, your yeah, background in hip hop, yeah. Okay, so um, I, when I was young, my brother, uh, he was 10 years older than me. He was a DJ. Hip hop was really starting to emerge around this time. And my brother was a DJ. Now, we, our city that we were closer to was Philadelphia. It was closer to Philly than New York City. So I used to tag along with him as a little kid, and he was a teenager, and go with him. And it was like, you know, there weren't a lot of DJs, you know. Some people, you had to have turntables and equipment, you know. So to have that in my house was crazy. It was dope, like, to have that turntables, equipment in my house that I could play with once in a while, though he didn't like me to play with them. And I would just hang out with him, and he was like the cool dude around town because he was a DJ. He would make mixtapes. And this was, a, this was a town outside of Philly. It wasn't a city. So for him to be doing that, it was like, you know, he had all the records. He had crates of records and everything. And that, and from that moment, because before, like, hip-hop was a thing, meaning the music, rap music was a thing, you know. There was a culture that was similar, was the same, but it just the music really crystallized it all, really. But, you know, when the rap record started to come, you know, I started to feel like, you know, it was everything. Hip hop became everything at that point. So from the early young years, I remember, you know, he would give me the mic. I'd be like, you know, eight years old, and he'd be like, "Hey, bust the rhymes." And, you know, I'd be rapping, you know, some some lyrics to a song that I heard, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that sort of thing. So I came up with hip hop music all around, and then you know, got a little bit more into all the culture. Um, you know, like break dancing and, and not really too much graffiti writing, but writing it in notebooks, you know what I'm saying? Not too much, not like the graffiti cats used to go run on trains. We didn't even have trains where I was at, really, but people would spray paint on walls and such. But like, in the, you know, the graffiti writing in notebooks. So anyway, I always loved music and hip-hop music and rap music. So well, I remember when I saw the Source magazine, and uh, when I was young, I was in rap groups and all this other thing. And I saw the Source magazine. And I always liked to write as well, you know, just whatever type of writing, creative writing, whatever it was, rap, writing raps, you know, whatever it was. And I saw the Source magazine. And before that, it was Black Sea or, or Fresh magazine or these, these little teeny bop magazines where they would put, you know, they would treat rap, rap and rappers like these heart throbs and teeny bops and put the pull out posters in there but when i saw the source and i realized this is about 1990 fast forward to 1990 and i saw the source magazine and it was on stands that had ll cool j who was one of my favorite rappers at the time on the cover and um i picked it up and the way they covered their music was with uh sincerity and realness and they took it very seriously and it had the same attitude i had about hip-hop and then I recognized that it was something that was, you know, there were like-minded people around the country, you know, perhaps around the globe, who saw the music and culture as deeper than uh, some passing fad or just some teen plaything. It was something that was really a deep culture that had a lot of artistic merit and value and cultural significance in America. And I was reading this, and I, I think it was reflecting the same conversations that my friends and I would be having on the street corners, you know, late at night about music and, and hip-hop and, you know, what was happening around, and this magazine crystallized it. And from then on, I recognized that there was a way that this culture could help, um, you know, it was portable. It could be, it could travel from state to state and from, um, from country to country, you know. So now, you, growing up, I'm I'm from... Northern New Jersey, like born in Northern. I'm from North what? originally, but oh, uh, North, okay. Lived in Irvington, lived in the Hillside, so this that's just Union County. So yeah, yeah. So growing up, we thought that hip hop was just in New York, and that was it. And uh, we just, you know, they just they just gave us a little piece. And, yeah. And I'm pretty sure nobody ever imagined back then, because we didn't, that Philadelphia or any any other part of the country was. <laughs> was was experiencing what we were experiencing well it's funny because when i was being from philly not from philly but from the city like that area that was like my nearest city and i'm thinking more i'm fast forwarding like in the 80s you know because in the 80s we had you know steady b 
Cool C, Will Smith, and these guys, you know, Fresh Prince and such. And and it was a big deal because um, we always talked about, and they actually had rap battles from New York and Philly, and that was always a thing, you know. Steady B's radio, first record was um, uh, was uh, I'll Take Your Radio. You know, they kind of started the rap battle thing, you know, on wax, uh, Philly did, because there was a label called Pop Art out of Philly. They signed uh, Roxanne Dante, Molly Maul, and the Juice Corner before they became where they became. You know, they were on pop art first, and then they left, and then um, and then they made a diss, Juice Crew diss for Steady was was was, uh, was Cool C's record, Juice Crew diss. This is before like, you know, Roxanne Chante really blew it off with a rap diss against the real Roxanne. So this is way back. So Philadelphia always had this thing about being like a, uh, um, uh. Like a Medina, like it, like if it was Mecca in New York, Philly was Medina, or like a second city in, in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It always looked at itself like that. You know what I mean? I imagine every every city kind of might have might have felt that way. Like Newark might have felt that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know, Newark was the second. You know what I mean? Or or <laughs> L.A. might have felt that way. Yeah, they, or you know what I'm saying? All the cities probably felt like they were the, they were the next one. Yeah, they call Newark. You know? They call Newark at some point the sixth borough. Yeah, yeah, because it kind of is. Yeah. It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, fast forwarding. Like, when did you get involved in actually contributing? Like being a, a well, actual contributor to to the culture. Okay, well, on a, on a, well, I always contributed locally. Like, I always involved, like, just as a, uh, as a kid growing, coming up, like all the other kids who contributed where they could on their own scene, their own set. But when I was at the, when I was at Kings, I, um, I got an internship. Well, I used to do a radio show at Kings, too. I did a hip hop show, a radio, a radio I, I, show at Kings. Yeah. Think back, I remember that now. Yeah. But, um, but I got a, I got a, uh, internship. At the Source magazine, this was in while I was at King. This was in 1997, and there, um, you know, that was like a dream come true. I also had internships at different places, but that was like Jive Records, a couple other places. But the Source is what stole me away from all of those places because I I was with my my tribe there, you know. So I started eventually. I started writing for the magazine, and then I became the music editor for Source magazine. And then the senior editor of Source Magazine. Now, the music editor, that was like a, uh, a position of a great responsibility because the rating system was everything when it came to uh, hip-hop music, the five-mic rating system. And that was one of my main responsibilities as a music editor was to oversee that rating system, wow. which you kind of, at that time, it still mattered. Now that those kind of is a shadow form of itself, if anything. Not a, it doesn't really have much of an impact on the culture. But it wasn't only just documenting the culture at that point. It was also not just reflecting, but it was moving the culture forward. It was um, impacting the culture. So it was full of opinion and facts and and uh, insight and music. Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. It was full of all of that stuff, you know, and it really pushed the push the culture forward and it was a meeting space so in that way you know and all the people who worked there were you know took their job seriously as safeguarders of our culture because you know this is a time when other cultures started to when uh, when, the, when not other cultures when when um when the uh the main uh you know popular society started to key in and look at uh, hip hop culture as something viable that could be sold and the commodity as something that had some some value and we looked at ourselves as the safeguard of that of the culture and of the music because it was an authentic voice so in that way I mean I think the source is really where I contributed began to contribute the most to the culture because um, I always saw the the source as a, as a as a safeguard against you know um, outside forces who didn't understand or who attempted to to um, create a, a, a poor perception of hip hop. So, so is it safe to say that you were responsible for uh, 
for giving giving artists and in, in, in their work the amount, the number of mics? Well, um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that me personally myself only, but I oversaw that. It was a, it was a team of us. It was, it, but I'm the one who oversaw it. It was my it, the, the music staff voted, and it was my job to oversee it all. I kind of had more influence than the others when I chose to because I was a music editor. But for the most part, it was a democratic. For the most part, it was a democratic, um, a democratic process. You but, know? You, but you were part of that whole process. Yes, I was part of that process, wow. and that was to give critical insight to the value of the art. You know, as as a critic at that point, you know, to give insight into the value of the art from an authentic standpoint. Because you take something like Elmatic got five mics. You know, but um, Rolling Stone would not have given it that. Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it was for us to validate our music and our culture and our art. And um, it was a heavy responsibility to do, a heavy responsibility, but it was also great, really rewarding as someone who really cared about the mu 